Friends simply called him Wilbur. Abe Lincoln believed that every school child should know his name and his story. William Wilberforce was born right here in Hull, England, in an upper room of this house. In his early 20s, Wilberforce would take a journey with a friend, Isaac Milner, and Isaac Milner would, would talk to him about faith and about God and about God's will for his life. And Wilberforce looked back on that conversation and those travels together with Milner. And he said, you know, at first, I didn't want to discuss this. What does God want me to do with my life? But it planted a seed. Wilberforce would decide to pursue, to chase a mission. And at the age of 28, in October of 1787, he would go and he would meet with John Newton just outside London. And they'd have a conversation about what should I do with my life? Where can I best be used by the hurting world, by the needs of the world? And Wilberforce was considering leaving politics to get involved just in a spiritual journey alone. And John Newton in that conversation said, let God use you in politics. Let God use your gifts to impact the world. And after that long conversation, Wilberforce would go to his room and he'd write down this simple phrase, a phrase that would guide the rest of his life. He wrote down, God Almighty has set before me two great objects, the suppression of the slave trade and a reformation of manners. He proposed to to Parliament, let's end slave trade, let's abolish slave trade, let's abolish slavery around the world. And he went about it with a group of people, with a group of friends that would be known as the saints. They used all kinds of methods to communicate this mission to the world. It took about almost 20 years before the first step was achieved, but it would take the rest of Wilberforce's life to get to where he was pursuing. Three days before his death in 1833, the abolition of slavery was passed in Parliament three days before Wilberforce would die. Wilberforce seemed to understand this statement. How can the gifts that I've been given overlap with the needs of a broken world that we live in?